You're listening to the Game Beyond podcast with host Gabe Mack. Harness the power of play with serious game design. Hello and welcome to the Game Beyond Live. That's right, I am your host Gabe Mack and I will be talking about serious game design basically today again like uh, we usually talk about. I do have some news um, that I would like to share with you. Yes, if you haven't um, checked out the website, you know, um, got uh, this is of course you know the game beyond we teach how to harness the power of play serious game design how to use games to basically solve real world problems you got a problem we want to basically solve it with games all right so if you are interested go and check out our online course we've got a currently we've got an online course which is an introduction course to the basics of serious game design and these of course is our theories and uh, techniques and practices that you can apply to all game design not just video game design not just serious game design but essentially it's the the basics of what you need to to really design a great game and um, if you haven't checked it out, uh, we just recently did a, uh, I did a, um, a blog post about Tron, the game in real life. Yes, um, I'm talking about disc golf. And disc golf is a game that I discovered recently when I moved back to the States. And for me, it really is, it really captures that kind of essence in real life of what I thought Tron would be. Now, many of you know, you know, Tron is this movie back in the early 80s, I believe back in 1982, when Jeff Bridges, aka the dude, right, um, actually gets sucked into a computer and because of the master control program, right, the basically the operating master operating system, this AI, artificial intelligence, it puts Jeff Bridges' character, Flynn, into the game grid where he has to play all these different types of video games, basically, but then in real life, very much like a, a LARP escape room, but with all these, you know, digital feedback abilities. And one of the things that was significant in the movie was these discs that they would have these frisbees basically and they would be considered you know floppy disk well we had floppy disk back in the day not cds yet but we had albums you know in those days but they're basically they were like cd discs you know almost like a hard drive that you know you would throw around and your identity was written on these things and and this is inside the game or inside the computer and you know if you got whacked or if you lost your disc or whatever it was game over right so they had a lot of really interesting games that they would play that we see you know these various uh, variations of games such as um, I should probably do a whole nother segment about what the origins of a lot of those games were but one of the actions which was often uh took place within those these kind of battle games that they had was the throwing of the disc basically like a frisbee or a disc and really disc golf is the closest thing uh that you can go and and do which which really is like that and this is very popular in america um you don't really see it in a lot of other countries some people maybe there are ha there are you know a, is a disc golf uh course in your area or maybe it's a good idea to go and take uh, and maybe make one right so essentially the the idea of disc golf the game of disc golf is is essentially the same as golf except you're using a disc and you you basically throw it into these buckets it's these chain link fence buckets right and you have you know a par three course or a par four course and just like in golf you have to try if it's like a par three course you basically have three throws and then you throw it once from the tee and then you walk and then you throw it again from where it lands and you walk and you throw it from where it lands and you try to get your disc or frisbee into one of the buckets 
Yeah, or the chain buckets, buckets or hole. And just like in golf, if you get one under par, that's an eagle. You get two under par, or uh, sorry, one under par is a birdie. Two under par is an eagle. Uh, one over uh, par is a bogey. And you count up your your strokes or throws, and you see how well you did compared to others. Um, and of course, there's the same variations that you can play with golf, whereby you basically both play as a team where you know you each throw and you take the closest or the best throw. Um, you can do those similar uh, variations of golf in disc golf as well. But the interesting history behind disc golf is with this guy. His name is Steady Eddie Hedrick. So Steady Ed, right, used to be a VP at Whammo. This is the company, the toy company that actually did Frisbee. Yeah. And he wanted to call it Frisbee golf, but even <laughs> his colleagues, I guess, didn't like him over at Whammo. And they said, uh, no, you cannot call it Frisbee golf. It's our patent. So, and he's like, dude, guys, this is like to sell more Frisbees. Come on. And he's like, all right, fine, screw it. Um, I'm going to patent it as Disc Golf instead. And so he patented the name Disc Golf, but then he made it public uh, license so anybody could use it. He's like, you know, screw you, Whammo. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Steady Eddie. And in 1976, that was really around the time that Disc Golf and Steady Eddie was able to launch it two key things occurred one he figured out how to do the chains on the basket to be able to catch the disc i mean they had all kinds of strange like you know designs but this idea of the chains into the bucket so when you throw it it goes ching and the disc falls in very satisfying i must say there there's something so satisfying about hitting those chains and hearing that chains as a feedback and a sound thing that i think really helps the game if you're playing it you know if you're throwing it from far away and you hear the ching you're like oh yes baby we hit it right um i think you should actually personally i think they should add add a little bell on it so if you hit it it goes ding 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 and rings a little bell as well but essentially the same thing we see a little nice little feedback loop happening there so yeah um the other thing that happened was that in um, the mid seventies is that Ed went to a bunch of parks and recreation, uh, places and said, Hey, look, let's set up disc golf courses in all these parks. It's really easy to do. It's basically you just, you know, put a 18 of these bucket holes down and, you know, we're good to go. And so, you know, as far as, expanding the um the availability of certain amenities at parks you know for the parks and recreation this is a very cheap way to basically convert part of the park into a uh, recreational activity now the nice thing i got to say about you know golf uh, versus disc golf it's a lot easier to just carry a couple of these you know frisbees around rather than the golf, I never was really good at golf. I mean, I played it many times, but it was just never my thing. You know, the hitting of the little ball with the stick. Now, the throwing of the disc is something that, you know, hey, festival, let's throw out the Frisbee, man. You know, underhand, backhand, woo-hoo-hoo-hoo, -hoo -hoo, you know, it's something I was, you know, more into. So I've got a little more skill with that. And I found it a lot nicer because it's basically, instead of on the golf course where everything is just like taken out and it's all the fake green grass and you know the the artificial sandbars and all that blah, right i i just it, it's it's just an abomination of nature in many ways personally to me disc golf on the other hand we get to walk through the forest we get to walk through the woods we get to see nature you know we get to breathe in the the fresh clean air it's it's a lot more um, for an outdoorsy uh, type of person, that's much better game than, than golf. Um, and, you know, it's good for you. I got to say, my, my father, he's been uh, having some, some issues with uh, his, uh, his hips and his knees, um, whereby he's um, actually been getting operations to get uh, titanium uh, hips and uh, knee replacements. And 
beforehand, before you know, going into it, into the the uh, various um, operations that he was having, and you know, also in the recuperation, disc golf has really been great because it it's a nice, easy walk outside. Yet, because he played golf for so many years, that adrenaline of trying to get under par, get that low amount of strokes it drives him to actually just go a little bit further and walk and exercise just a little bit more than probably what he normally would just do so i found it to be an excellent way to incentivize and motivate him to walk a little longer which is what he needs for recuperation of uh healing you know you gotta exercise just a little bit not running around right you know just a nice little walk you know through through the woods so yeah um disc golf if you haven't played it you know give it a try um i'd love to do a uh, live stream uh, one time where I actually go out and do a round of disc golf and we can check it out and we can play some disc golf together. All right, very cool. So uh, if you haven't checked out the game design basics, harnessing the power of play, go ahead to school.thegamebeyond.com, right? Or go to our website and you can go to it there and check it out. It is the best way to get started into game design, and we're going to be having some advanced courses coming up. Right now, I am in the final stages of developing the next course, which is presentation technique. So we've got a whole bunch of different tips and tricks, professional tips and tricks from many years of doing keynote speeches around the world. Uh, where does this fear of public speaking come from? We're going to tackle that as well. And we've got a bunch of different games that we can play to improve our presentation technique. So make sure to sign up to the Game Beyond and get in on that before, because uh, I'm going to have some early bird specials coming up, right? All right, everybody. Well, I hope you are doing great. I hope you're having a great day. And... That's about it for me today. So yeah, go ahead and game on. Next week, I'm going to have a lot more. I just have a lot of uh, production going on with this new course we're about to launch. So, all right, play on. Become a serious game designer. Go to thegamebeyond.com and learn how to harness the power of play.